Hello, my name's Simon Jupp. Uh, I work at the University of Manchester, and this is a quick demo of a, a tool that we've been working on called Populous. Um, and what I'll hopefully be able to show is how we can use this tool to create some templates for populating owl ontologies and how we can actually convert these templates um, into ontology axioms. So I'm going to start right field uh, Populous up first on the command line. And Populous itself is based on a, another tool developed at Manchester called right field. So this is the basic right field interface. And what right field allows us to do is to create um, restrictions on values in cells in this spreadsheet and then export these to Microsoft Excel. So I'll just give a quick example of that. Uh, I can open an ontology into right field, so I can do this directly uh, from a file on my system, or I can connect to BioPortal and get some ontologies from there. Uh, so we'll go to BioPortal. Uh, here's the list of ontologies in BioPortal, and I want to import the mouse anatomy ontology. And on the right hand side here, we get a preview of the ontology. And what I want to do is to create a restriction on these columns here um, to say that the only allowed values come from any subclass of thing in the mouse anatomy ontology. So the way I do that is that I have thing selected in the ontology and then I can choose from one of these options so I can also restrict the values to instances or direct instances but in this case I'm going to use all subclasses. So with this created I can actually save this file now uh, and open it up in Excel. So I'm going to save this workbook. I'm going to call it cell types mouse validated. I need to add the XLS extension. And I'm going over to standard Microsoft Excel now. And if I open that file I just saved, I see that this is a spreadsheet and there's some validations created. If I click on this, I see the list of the terms from the mouse anatomy. Now this is re really useful for um, collecting and annotating data in spreadsheets, so you can create restrictions on um, cells and gather data using controlled vocabularies. And this is the main use case for right field. And what we've done is extend right field to um, with an extension called Populous where we're focused on creating templates and spreadsheets for generating our ontologies. So I'll load up another spreadsheet. Uh, and here's some cell, cell types. This is a very simple template that we've actually been using to generate an ontology that describes cells of the kidney. So I'm just going to copy these cells over and put them into my template. And save this file and go back right field and open up this, that workbook that we just saved. So this is the same data loaded from Excel. Um, and you can already see in here we get validation so we can see that these terms coming up in green are actually valid terms from the mouse anatomy ontology and this is actually validated against the uh, label of the terms so it's a bit nicer for humans we don't have to work in um, sort of semantic free identifiers. So I want to add a few more restrictions onto this. Um, first of all, I want to restrict this column to terms from the cell type. So I'm going to open the cell type ontology. I'm going to open this from my file system. Um, let's find the root of the cell type ontology, which is here. And I want to restrict column A to subclasses of cell. See, these have instantly come up in red because these are actually new cell type terms. These don't appear in the cell type ontology. And similarly, I want to do the same for the gene ontology. Okay, that's done. So let's find the root of the biological process branch of the gene ontology. You see that there. And I want to add... Uh, restriction on these cells here. So you can see 
that these terms that we already had entered, the ones that come up in green, are already valid terms from the gene ontology. Now, obviously you could go and export this file and work on it directly in Excel, but um, there's a few advantages to working within the populous extension of right field directly. So I'll give an example. I want to create a new cell. This is going to be a glomerular capillary endothelial cell. Okay, and this is coming up in red, so this isn't from the cell type ontology. And we want to associate this with a uh, mouse anatomy part. And this is, we know that there's a glomerular. Now at this point I can tab complete and I can get a list of all the cells. So this actually searches as I'm typing and it's actually at the top of the list here, glomerular capillary endothelium. So I put that in and that's instantly validated in green. And similarly for some processes, um, these cells participate in glomerular filtration. So I can start searching for glomerular filtration and I get it. And there's other processes that I might want to add in this cell. And with the standard Excel approach, when you're using validations, you only get single values, but it's actually quite useful to put multiple values in a cell. Um, the only other possible way would to sort of create these across other cells. But for this template, we're not fixed on the number of gene ontology terms we can associate. So we can actually just use a very simple uh, comma separated list uh, and I can start searching again. Um, and I want regulation of glomerular filtration. Okay, so both these have been validated. So we could carry on populating this and what I want to do now is fire up the wizard for transforming this data into an actual owl representation. So in the tools menu, uh, there's the OPPL wizard. So the first thing to do is to actually select the columns that you're interested in. So we want columns A, B, and C. And the rows that we're going to convert are from two to 10. So we set this down here. Now, what this has done is it's looked into the spreadsheet and it's identified that there's already three ontologies loaded. Um, and I also need an additional ontology uh, that contains the relationships um, that I want to talk about. So I can actually load these directly from a URI or I can load from a file. So I'm going to load the oboe relationship ontology. Um, and then for the new ontology, I want to set the URI that I'm going to create for this new ontology. So let's give this one URI. So this is Elico, the project that's funding this work. Um, and this is a cup ontology. And I want to set the actual output file, so where to save this ontology. Um, create a file called cupo.al. Right. So the next thing is we actually select the pattern. So we're using OPPL patterns. Um, these OP OPPL is a language for transforming um, OWL ontologies and generating OWL axioms. Uh, there's a link on the Populous website for more information about OPPL. So I'm going to create some patterns that I want to generate in my ontology. I've got some pre-written patterns here. So the first one is a pattern for the adding the anatomy axioms. So create a pattern called anatomy pattern. I'm just going to paste this pattern in. So let's have a look at this pattern. So what this pattern does is I specify two variables, one for a cell and one for anatomy part. And I have a third generated variable. And what this variable does is create a restriction. So the restriction is an intersection between cell, which is uh, this is the identifier for cell from the cell type ontology. Uh, with an existential restriction, um, which is part of some anatomy part, which is this is the other variable for anatomy here. So once we've set up some variables, we can actually start to generate the OPPL pattern itself. Um, and what I want to do is add an axiom to the ontology 
where the cell is equivalent to this part of restriction. That pattern's in, and I want to create another pattern for the anticipates. I've got this in the file here. So there's actually a plugin for Protege 4 for generating these OPPL patterns and exporting the patterns in this syntax. Um, and let's go through this one. So we have a cell variable and a participant variable. And then we have an additional line here where we want to create an intersection of this restriction. So for the gene ontology terms, there might be multiple values in a cell. So for each of these values, we want to instantiate this first variable and then for all the variables, um, create an in intersection of this restriction. And the actual axiom to be added, this is going to be a subclass axiom um, of the intersection of this restriction. So we'll go next. So the next stage is to actually map columns to variables that we generate in the pattern. So column A, uh, we want to map, map to our cell variable. In column B, this is our anatomy part. And uh, column C, this is our participant part of the named variable. OK. Finally, we want to handle any new entities. So obviously, these terms in red um, are unknown. So we have to, or we can select the base URI for creating these entities, uh, and we can add some information if we want to have specific prefixes. Um, and there's various other configuration options which I'm planning to add, such as adding number ranges and stuff like that. And we get an output window here. So okay, this is done. And when we click finish, we can save the ontology. We've actually just got a preview here of the generated ontology. And this is in the Manchester Owl syntax. So when we click finish, the ontology is actually saved to the coupled owl file that we specified earlier. And what we can do now is actually just have a look at this file. So if I load up Protege. So here's Protege, and I've already got the gene ontology, the cell type ontology, the mouse anatomy. So all the sort of source ontologies are loaded in. And what I'm going to do is open that new generated ontology. Here it is, couple.al. And if we go down to one of the classes that generated. And you see here, here's the ontology uh, with the patterns. So we've got the kidney leukopenia ascending limb epithelial cell, which is part of some leukopenia ascending limb. So that's the uh, sort of quick demo of Populous. Uh, this is a tool very much in development at the moment, but um, we know of a few projects that are involved with generating ontologies from templates. So I'm quite keen to get some feedback and some feature requests um, and yeah just have a play and let me know what you think so thanks for listening